G'day everyone, thank you for stopping by uh, this week's video. Today we're going to be having a look at the iDoing head unit, the 9 inch Android head unit that we're going to be swapping out for the pumpkin, which is a 7 inch unit that I've currently got in the car. Now I'm going to throw up the specs on the screen on this. iDoing actually got in touch with me and asked whether I was interested in having them send me out a test unit for the purpose of review. As always, with open arms, I said yes, absolutely, shoot me one out. To their credit, they got that out to me in probably around about a week. They do tend to sell these on AliExpress, so if you want to have a look for these, I'll put a link down in the description where you can have a look at this one. Now, the reason I want to get stuck into this and the reason I'm doing this today, I've got a few days off, and this is going to be part of, I guess, a larger project. For those of you that follow the channel and saw the review on the Foamy, the Snow Cannon, link up there in that left-hand corner so you can have a look at that if you're interested. Uh, towards the end of the video, I made some references to a few of the guys and a few of the suppliers that are associated, in particular with the Pajero forums and you know, different stuff that I've seen around in relation to the Pajero. One of the things that I referred to and mentioned was the Torque Lockup Kit from MM 4x4. Now, I've actually got one of those on their way. I, I put an order in a few days ago there's going to be an install video and then I want to go on and talk to you about you know the differences that I feel how it works and I'll give you a bit of an introduction to it uh, and basically talk to you about my experience I may also later on down the line go with the flappy paddles but that's going to be a future video now the reason I'm so keen obviously to get the new head unit installed in the car other than having a 9 inch unit instead of the 7 inch this one's actually got the fascia included which should tidy up that install that I've got there where I had to sort of custom and cut and uh, you know, jimmy it to get that last unit in. The other thing that I'm really keen on is I've got the Torque app installed on the Pumpkin unit, but I want to get the Torque app installed on this. I want to get it set up so I can measure transmission temperatures and all that sort of stuff. The reason we want to do that is once we get around to putting the Torque lockup kit in, I obviously want to do some tests and some comparisons. We're going to use the Torque app and the OBD2 reader that I've got in the car there. Time dependent, I really would like to get around to doing something just free running. Uh, I, I do about a 180 return trip to work uh, yeah, every morning and afternoons. We'll get to see what that does for our fuel economy, uh, running backwards and forwards. I'm also intending to do a towing one as well, so we'll tow the caravan around, we'll take it up some hills, we'll test some temperatures and we'll see how that goes as far as fuel economy goes. And then I'm hoping to go to the beach and, and you know, do some forward driving and all that sort of stuff. So how much of that I'll actually get done, I don't know. But we'll definitely get around to doing the install and some general comparisons. Whether it turns out being you know, three, four, five videos, something like that, or that I'll tie it all together in one outside of the install video, I don't know. Anyway, getting to the point, we're going to jump in and install this iDoing head unit. And the reviews on these units are going to be pretty good. It's a PX5 chip, uh, if that means anything to you. I'll put the details of the resolution up on the screen there as well. Now I'll throw it up on the screen there. You're going to see the size difference between the old 7 inch and the new 9 inch, which is the one we've got here. Now there is quite a difference uh, in the sizes, obviously 2 inches. But I think the 9 inch is a real nice fit for the size of the, the space that we've got there in the middle of the Pajero between those two vents. The seven's great, and I've been really happy with it, but frankly, I think I'm gonna be a little bit happy with the nine in there. Now, this is how it came sent out to me. They did ask me, you know, the model of the Pajero and all that sort of stuff. Jump on their website, and I'll put a link, you know, down in the description there. But what you're gonna see here is a number of different fascias. The Pajero's obviously depending on model. Some are gonna have the Rockford Fosgate stuff in there. Your dash is gonna be slightly different. Some are gonna have something similar to mine. So have a look at the pictures there. You'll be able to determine which one suits your dash and then order appropriately. So I'm really happy that this has actually come with the fascia. I think these retail for around about the $500 mark. Again, it'll be up there on the screen. I can't remember specifically. What they did ask me to do was do an install video and then a review video following on, you know, how the radio operates, all that sort of stuff. So we'll get around to that. Now, as far as the install goes, again, for anybody that's followed the channel, little card up the top there, I did film the install of the pumpkin head unit. Now, because Papa Jero already had an aftermarket install done on it, Unfortunately, I wasn't able just to unplug the, the, the harness and, and just plug it all straight back in. These do come with a harness. I did query about the harness that they'd supplied with my unit, whether that was just a plug and play Mitsubishi harness, and they have given a thumbs up and said yes. We'll put their response just quickly up on the screen there so you can see their actual response. Um, you'll set up on the screen, but you will get that specific harness that will make this install plug and play if you're going from OEM over to this unit. So if, if you're doing that, literally, I reckon you can have this knocked off in about half an hour. It's not going to get any easier than that. For, unfortunately for me, I think it's going to be a cut and shut, you know, cut and solder the wires, taking these harnesses off. They did ask me which harness I had in the back, and because my car's already had a aftermarket put in, they've all been cut off, unfortunately. I'm kind of hoping that these plugs are going to match up with the old 
pumpkin unit that we've pulled out. I'm not expecting it to unfortunately, so I think I'm gonna just have to cut everything and solder everything back up. If you're gonna be doing an install of this unit from your OEM unit, you should be just doing a direct plug and play. It shouldn't have any issues there. I'm gonna get started on this. I'm not gonna take you through pulling out the dash. I've got a number of videos, again, card up there down in the description, how to get the full dash out of the Pajero, how to you know, unmount your head unit, how to install the new head unit, cutting all the wires, all that sort of stuff. So we're not going through that again, we're just not. What I'm gonna do is just touch on some key points as we do the install. We'll show you how the fascia mates up uh, with the dash itself. Now, if it's just plug and play, I'll show you that. If anything else pops up along the way, we'll take you through that as well. Ultimately, when you see me next, we're probably gonna have this installed. We'll take you through the setup process and we'll give you a quick look at it. Over here, there is one thing that's a little bit different to the pumpkin unit that I did prefer on the pumpkin unit, and that is the pumpkin had a couple of slots for micro SD cards on the front. So rather than having to put USBs, etc., in the back, so I could, you know, put my music on, slot it in the micro SD slot, and then be listening to music. Unfortunately, this one only has the inputs on the back for your USB. Good news is they do supply a USB extension cord. You're not gonna be able to access these from the front, so if you wanna plug anything into these, now's the time to do it or run that extension cord somewhere where you can reach it. I would have expected them to have two of those uh, in the packaging. Unfortunately, you only get one of the extensions. So if you need some additional extensions, order one on eBay, you know, standard USB, run it wherever you need to and then you can plug and unplug. Accessories goes, you've got that USB extension cable that I spoke about. This is a GPS module. Hopefully these are gonna be a match up for the one that we've already got in the pumpkin. We have to route those again. These are outputs uh, for your reverse camera, etc. These are all gonna, also gonna to go to our remote amp. And these are our basic harnesses. I'm not sure whether we're gonna to need to use all of these or not. I think the one we're gonna use is probably likely gonna be this one here. And we've also got this one. So there's a little bit of confusion here in that how these actually work. There's a, a bit of replication here uh, between the two. Once we get this figured out, I think this is the one we're gonna probably end up using because these are already cut. There seems to be some replication in some of these cables. We'll figure that out as we go along and I'll give you some pointers. Microphone, I was kind of hoping that the microphone again was gonna be a match for the one that I've already got in there from the pumpkin, but that looks like a little Wi-Fi antenna that's gonna plug in out of the back. There are some additional accessories available, so your 3G, 4G uh, modem if you want that. And you've also got an input for your DAB radio as well. It's obviously our radio, we've got Wi-Fi and GPS. And don't forget your hazard lights on the back of these, or that one. You can see how quickly this can all be done. Doesn't take you a lot of time to get into the back to do a stereo. Me for Matt, who was asking me about, you know, cost for getting a stereo installed. You can see here, Matt, how quickly this all happens. And if it's somebody that knows what they're doing, and it's a plug and play situation, shouldn't cost you an absolute fortune to get something get a stereo installed. Now the question here is gonna be whether we still need to use this harness or not to mount the rear of the radio. Okay, it's one head unit out. Now the pumpkin's probably gonna go into the caravan, I think. Okay, uh, so there you go, Matt. That's how long it takes you to pull out a stereo. And the Pajero, not real long at all. It's just the bad news is here, none of our existing plugs from our pumpkin are gonna fit, so. I've pulled the old pumpkin out. I'm just sussing out all the wires in the back, making sure I can find everything I need. Before I start cutting all that, because once I cut that, I'm no longer going to be able to put the pumpkin back in. So what I want to do is just pull the fascia apart, make sure this radio actually fits, the fascia meets up, all that sort of stuff. So, so we need to remove the current fascia and get that off this display unit here. And there is a couple of screws on either side that we need to take out there as well. A few more on the other side. Pop those little trim tabs and should be able to just take this straight out. A couple of tabs on the bottom, you can see one there and there. And a few of them just around the top there as well. These ones on top are kind of like a little push-in type jobby. Where you can lift up the little tabs. Lifting up the tabs seems to work that a little bit better. Now that is our display unit out, and that's what that looks like. Just gonna grab our main unit. And that looks like an exact replica. 
Now with that stereo in there, I can't reach those bottom ones, so I just need to line this up. There are some alignment tabs on either side. One, two, three. I think we're seated on the bottom. That looks, and that looks pretty bloody good. I've got to tell you, these seem like they're seated a little bit deeper back. I'm not real sure, but the buttons are all still functioning. Not a problem at all. I just want to see how this seats into the dash itself. Oh. Look at that, bloody perfect. And to be honest, I don't think I'm gonna to need to use those mounting brackets at the back. That's that's really solid. That is really, really solid. This section's gonna pop in underneath. Just like that. And look at that, that's so bloody easy. So for Matt, uh, you know, if if they're doing this to your car, mate, and they've and they don't know what they're, you know, 500 bucks is pretty steep for an install. If this was a plug and play, this would be ready to go already. I would have already just unclipped the harnesses, plugged everything back in, plugged it back in, all your speakers, all your power, everything would be wired up. But because I've had an aftermarket install already done, I've got to go through and cut all these wires and that's what's going to take the time. But I am so happy with how that fascia, how that's sitting, that looks so good. I'm really, I guess you're getting that I'm really impressed with that. It does have a protection on there which I don't want to take off because we've already marked that a little bit but look for those of you guys who are looking at these I doing head units if you are looking at buying one of these for your Pajero make sure you get the right fascia and if you haven't already cut your your harnesses and stuff at the back it will be plug and play you'll be ready to go I'm going to come back to you when I've got it all wired up uh, but I think you can see how that looks compared to the previous one that I had where I had to sort of customize it and the previous owner already played with the dash made a bit of a mess of it, but that is bloody brilliant. I can't wait to get this going. All right, I'll talk to you in a minute when I've got it up there. So those of you who are keen-eyed, you might see this iDrive sitting up here. I picked that up today, got it second-hand for 170 odd bucks. I can already tell you, so much better than the uh, Chinese version that I had. Uh, again, I'll put a link up in the description. I did post up a video saying these are the ones to avoid. But this iDrive is so much better than that, and I'm really looking forward to testing that out. I haven't tested that out too much. We'll get back to that. We'll get to that in a later video, but at this stage, the iDrive, you know, that's uh, that's the duck's nuts as well, and, and so much improvement over that cheap Chinese shit that I had. This stuff back out. Get these wires in place. I'm really happy with that. That's so solid. I'm not even going to worry about those brackets at the back. I'm just going to leave that as is. I should have got this one in the first place. Okay, so we're just getting around to connecting up the RCAs for the remote amp over the back. Now, one thing I've actually noticed is that it only has front outputs for your line level speaker. So for your RCA outputs, uh, you've got front and then you've got a sub. Just to show you, this is the little harness that's provided. Uh, these ones that I've got separated over here, so we've got line in, that one's video out, that one's video out two, and that one's right in. So you've got left in and a right in, so you've got inputs. On the output side though, we've got front, right out, subwoofer out, front left out, and that's a video in. So we've got no rear outputs as far as our RCAs goes. If we're gonna go speaker level, I think those are all gonna be your outputs here. I'm just having a look. So we've got, these are all our powers. That's gonna be our remote for our thing. Yep, okay. So just to give you an idea, if you're gonna go speaker out, you've got one, two, three and four. So basically your white, gray, purple, and your green there, they're all gonna be your speaker output. So if you're using the harness and you're using your original speakers, you're gonna get four outputs. So you're gonna get you know, front left, front back, uh, right front, right back. But if we're using the RCA outputs, the line level, we don't have any outputs for the rear. I'm a little bit curious about that because I reckon they've mislabeled these. So your yellow is typically your videos. Normally, your red and white are gonna be your audio. So, I reckon they've mislabeled these. That's subwoofer, so that's brown. That can be any color. 
Uh, I don't recall what it was on that one, but it was a different colour as well. So I reckon our left in and our right in, I reckon they're our outputs on our rear speakers for RCA level and the front ones there. We're going to test that and we'll find out and I'll let you know, but I reckon that's going to be the case. So again, you know, if you hadn't done this before and you didn't know your colours or didn't have much experience, that could confuse the shit out of you. So I doing just, you know, a little bit of quality control there on the stickers. Uh, I think they're ass about, but we'll see how they go. Now here, just something I saw on the previous install, just a little bit of an electrical tape here. Plug in your RCAs and then just do a quick wrap of electrical tape. Just like that, that keeps them in place and they don't move and you know, never lose connection. So it's just a real handy little tip, that one. Typically these colours are all going to be standard, so your orange here is going to be your illumination, which is basically the one that you're going to run to something that goes to your lights or something that comes on with your lights. You can use your interior light or something along those lines. The good news here is the Pajero has a little light that comes on the glove box when you turn your lights on, so you can use that as a trigger for your illumination here, which will dim the dash or it'll know when it's on at night, so that's a handy one. Again, just eye doing, if you've got a chance, you know, give me another six inches of wire. I know this is cheaper, but it just gives me something more to work with. Uh, especially if on, on the harness here, that is, I guess, the one that you're going to wire in for a manual setup rather than using the harnesses. Just be nice to have a little bit more room to work with. Because uh, once I sold that first wire in, I'm working in here and it's really tight. So give me a bit more room to work with, that'd be nice. But we'll go with what we've got. We're not shrink wrapping today. Just using some more leco tape for around those connections. We are soldering and using leco tape. Only because there is a possibility that we may be doing this again uh, in the near future, who knows? I'm trying to simplify things for myself. Okay, so this is the moment of truth. We've got it installed up. It's about to turn on for the first time, so let's see what happens here. Just putting on accessories. Oh, okay, hello, here we go. Now I haven't plugged in the radio or anything like that. Uh, this is just it. So this is the standard, I guess, dash interface. Okay, that seems nice and responsive. It's already got talk app uh, installed already. Okay, and just to check, put in reverse. There's our reverse camera. Probably due to upgrade that. Okay, we'll just turn the car off. Takes a few seconds and it goes into shutdown. Now we'll do a cold start test later on, but for now, if we just turn it back on, it's just going to be in a sleep mode. You can see how quickly that comes out. Reverse camera, straight up, no problems there at all. And that is working with our dimmer there. You'll see that will dim just a little bit. There you go, turned off, comes back up, so it works nicely. Let's shut this down, get this patched up, and uh, play around with it. And that's it, that is the install done. You see I've still got the protective cover on that, so that's why that looks so rubbish, but I've got to tell you, if you're doing one of these installs, my recommendation is definitely get one with the fascia, and it's just, you know, drop in, plug and play. That's just so clean, such a nice install. And if you've got the harnesses, you know, you could probably have this done in half an hour. And that nine inch unit just really fits in there nicely. You could probably stretch it to possibly a 10, but that nine is a real nice fit. And it's obviously a lot more real estate than I had with the seven, which goes without saying. And obviously I've got to reprogram this display because that's all been unplugged. But uh, you can see how nice this is. Now straight off the bat, I can tell you the screen Nice and bright, nice and clear. Now there's some standard apps that I want to change around and get it, you know, set up. I'll probably put another launcher over the top of this. I think I had well, there's Nova launcher uh, that I was using on the other one, or there might have been some automobile, or there might have been some specific auto one that I was using there. Uh, there's a couple of radio apps here. I want to change the navigation, so straight away I've gone and put in Waze. That's my favourite navigation app, so that works really, really well. Uh, that's good. It's working with the GPS, etc. At the back, need to get the Talk app pro programmed up and get that all set up. For now, that is installed. I'll have it give it a bit of a run over, get some stuff programmed up. Um, the other thing that I can tell you already as well is the audio is so much better out of this one than it was the pumpkin. 
The pumpkin was okay, but that was the one major disappointment I had was the sound quality coming out of that. Obviously, I can't play any audio because we'll have to worry about getting copyrights, but the audio out of this one, so much better than out of the pumpkin. I believe this is an upgraded audio chip, and I'll put the details up there, the audio chip that's in it, and the specs and all that sort of stuff, but much, much better. Now, for those of you playing along at home, I've had a couple of days uh, with the eye doing head unit in the car. Been over for a beach run. I've had the talk app running, which I've got to say works really, really nicely. It's pairing up with everything. I still can't get an Android head unit for some reason to pair up with a GME XRS radio. I'm still working on that. Really liking the extra real estate, the 9 inches uh, versus the 7 inches. Obviously, everybody likes a couple of extra inches. I am missing that volume control, the actual hard button for volume control and some of the hard buttons that were down the side of the pumpkin but I'm getting used to the locations of the soft buttons on the iDoing head unit itself. I haven't successfully been able to get the AM radio to work so I'll go and check that out and I will report later on once I've had more time with this and we actually give you a rundown of the head unit and, and actually show you it in action. iDoing has been in touch, they've been really responsive and I've got to say for a Chinese company these guys have been exceptional with their responses and getting back to me really, really quickly, sometimes within 15 minutes. Now, I've got to tell you, that's a little bit unusual for a Chinese company. As far as the Australian guys that I've interacted with, you know, Azito, MM4 Wheel Drive, Bosch, all of those sorts of guys, I'm used to their responses being, you know, lickety split on the spot, for getting the information, getting me the information that I request and then getting that back to me straight away. I've yet to experience that from a Chinese company, so these guys are a real exception there. And I have seen in the reviews and doing some research that their follow-up service or their after-sale service is equally as good. Now, don't quote me on that. I haven't had to do that with them yet. But if their interaction with me over email with regards to this review unit is anything to go by, I think these guys are going to be great. Obviously, we've all had that experience. With some Chinese sellers, you know, you buy something, you get the cheap price, you roll the dice sometimes, uh, and then it doesn't go particularly well, and then you have nothing but difficulties trying to get in touch with them. So I don't believe that's going to be the case. I think you've got reasonable backup with these guys. But again, don't quote me. Uh, I'll, you know, I'll report back if I see anything else. Obviously, I like to do a lot of DIY stuff, but I've got plenty of experience in doing this sort of stuff. And I would literally say, if I had the plug and play harness, this would have had to have been one of the easiest installs I've ever done. So thanks to I doing for getting in you know, it, supplying the fascia, supplying the harness, and just making this so, so simple. Normally this is a sort of level of simplicity that you will get with you know the, the big brands like you know Kenwood, Sony, Pioneer, uh, or Alpine, or something like that. So this is this is really, really impressive uh, from, a, from a Chinese radio production or an Android head unit. Now one of the big questions is, should you go with an Android head unit over one of those? And ultimately that's gonna be up to you, I'm somebody that likes to fiddle, you know, obviously if you follow the channel you know that I like to fiddle with stuff, I like the DIY stuff, and I'm confident with my wiring. These harnesses for an OEM unit pretty much removes the challenges that go with that wiring. If you've got an Android tablet or a phone and you're used to installing applications and all that sort of stuff, this will be a walk in the park for you. If you're not real competent with that sort of stuff, maybe have a look at those big four uh, and you know, that might be a bit simpler, you know, plug and play out of the box, it's gonna work. This will work out of the box, but it's nice to be able to customise it, and that's why I really like the Android head unit. Uh, the audio quality out of this is really good. It's a lot better than the pumpkin unit, I've got to say. Uh, the quality the quality of the audio is just a couple of steps above, uh, you know, and that's literally over the whole spectrum. We're from bass, mid-levels, and highs are all just that much clearer and that much cleaner. So if you want to stick around for another video, you know, subscription, whatever that takes, uh, we will get around to doing some testing of this. As said in the early part of the video, we've got the Torque Lockup kit coming from Eminem 4x4. So we'll get that in. We're going to use that Torque app to test out for temperatures and all that sort of stuff. And then just, you know, see how it responds. But if you've got any questions, post them up, let me know. And I'll do my best to get back to you. Or I can shoot it through to iDoing and get them to give us a response there as well. But at this point, really, really liking this unit. It is a step above the pumpkin that I had in there. But realistically, it probably should be. It's probably been 18 months or something so I said, since I slapped that in there. And these Android head units are progressing at every stage. Every time you turn around, there's a new unit coming out. Not knowing who these guys were when they reached out to me for the purpose of review, I've been very impressed uh, with their interaction uh, with the head unit itself and basically the quality of the unit overall. And of course, it's always nice to get a freebie. So thanks very much, I doing for getting in touch and, and uh, supporting the channel and sending me the review unit for the purpose of this review. Uh, I appreciate it. And for everybody else, we will get around to doing a follow-up and then show you the actual unit in action. If you've got any questions, put them down below. I'll do my best to respond. If I don't know the answers, we'll shoot it off to iDoing and uh, see if we can get them to give us a response. We'll do a follow-up video a little bit later on. 
you know, take you through the unit itself. I'll show you how I've set mine up. I, I've put the Nova launcher over the top of the, the launcher that they've provided, which I wasn't a, a big fan of. This is a thing with Android head units. They tend to be a little bit of a work in progress when you get it. You buy it, but then that work in progress is also your ability to customize the radio and turn it into what you want. Same as what you do with a tablet or a phone when you get it. That's it, guys. Thanks very much for stopping by. We'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.